Hello and welcome. This is Michelle with Paper Stamp Inc. Thanks for stopping by my channel today where I like to give you inspiration on using paper stamp and ink to create some great projects. So I'm getting started in July on my craft fair series. I do craft fairs in the fall and it's time for me to get rolling on those because it takes a lot of time to create enough products for a craft fair. Now whether you're looking for craft fair ideas or you're just looking for some great gift items, make sure you hit that red subscribe button down below, ring the bell so you get notifications of future videos in my series. Today I'm going to bring to you this notepad tutorial. This is using a Dollar Tree notepad and I did um, get this uh, basic concept from Lyric Lover 810. I will put a link to her channel in the description below. Um, I'm using Stampin' Up! products and I'm using this beautiful new bird ballad paper. So let's go ahead and get started on putting this together. We're going to grab our paper and I have already pre-cut the paper to save us some time but I want to lay this out so you guys can get a visual on these paper cuts. So we are going to take a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. Now we're only going to use part of it today but I've got another video for you on how we're going to use the rest of it so don't throw that paper away. You're going to start with your 12 by 12 sheet and you're going to make a cut at three and a half inches. That's going to give us this piece. You're going to make another cut at three and a half inches and that's going to leave us a piece that is five inches by 12. Now you're going to take one of those three and a half inch pieces and you're going to cut it at ten and a half we're going to use this scrap in our project here. I love double-sided paper. It gives us coordinating designs that make it so easy with Stampin' Up! Then we're going to take those that other 3.5 by 12 inch sheet and we are going to cut it down to just under 5 inches. So 4 and 15 sixteenths. Now I know that's really just a tiny adjustment, but you'll see why in a moment. And if you're not sure where that sixteenths area is or if maybe your your trimmer doesn't go down that small just cut it at five and shave a, a tiny sliver off that's all we need we're going to end up with one piece of scrap here that we're not going to use and i will show you in my next video how we're going to use this five inch piece of paper so let's go ahead and bring in our we've also got a piece of whisper white it's just a scrap for punching our sentiment out we're going to bring in our stamp set I'm going to use free as a bird that actually coordinates with the bird ballad paper and this is one of the new products in the 1920 catalog i'm actually just pulling this out today for a sentiment so i'm not going to do a whole lot of stamping i'm going to let this paper do the work for me now i am using a little bit different paper but this is from the same bird ballad designer series paper suite and for our ink i am going to bring in pool party and I'm pulling that from my paper to have a coordinating color. And then I do have a one of the Stampin' Blends, and this is the um, Light Daffodil Delight. So very little coloring, but it just adds that little extra touch. So this pad of paper, notepads, they are five separated pads. They get You can get them at the Dollar Tree, so one dollar for this and we're going to make actually three projects in the end from this. So you'll see they've got these chipboard pieces on four of them and then there's one extra piece that does not have chipboard on the side, on the front. We want to get chipboard on both sides of our project. So we're going to have these three are going to be the main piece of our project. I'm going to tear off this top one that's got the backing. I'm going to tear off this next one and leave that chipboard there because like I said we want chipboard on both sides of those three pads and I will show you what we're going to do with these again in that next project we're going to fix that little that little pad that's all sad and doesn't have any chipboard on it but we've got a fix for that I'm going to bring in my tear and tape now you can do this with directional paper or non-directional paper. Of course, if you're going to use directional paper, you want to make sure which way you're putting that on when we get started. Um, you don't want it upside down. And don't ask me how I know that. 
never done that. Okay, you yeah, have done it a few times. Please tell me you've done it too. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know if, if you've ever done a project and a card or a project and you got done and you looked at it and you went, well, that's upside down. So don't let that stop you. There's always a fix. So don't get frustrated. We want to try and recoup those projects where we can. Cards, it's usually very simple. Just cutting that off and adhering that panel onto a new card base. And so I'm just taking this tear and tape and I am putting this all around the edges. I just want a nice, good, um, strong adhesive on here. And I'm trying to get pretty close to the edges there. I think I'm gonna kind of get one more little piece down in this corner here. And then we're gonna peel off these backings. Now, if your tear and tape wants to come up, you can always come in and just give this a good burnish. So make sure that that tape is adhered well on the other side so that it doesn't wanna pull up when you pull the backing up. Oops. So I don't know about you guys, but summer is going super fast where I'm at. Now I like to wait and take off that other tape until I get this front piece adhered. So for me, the easiest way I found to do that is for me to stand this up and I'm letting the paper pad and this DSP sit on my tabletop and then I'm lining this edge up down here. Okay, and that's going to help me get that nice and straight usually, except I got that off just a tad. We're going to peel that up and pull it over here. You can still manipulate this slightly if you get it off. That's why I do like working with my Tombow Mono Multi most of the time. You'll see that I use that in most most of my projects, but I just wanted a little bit stronger adhesive on this one. So let's go ahead and stretch that over there. I'm going to put a little bit of tear and tape on the top here as well. And now before I take that tape off, I'm just going to Kind of manipulate this around with my fingers so I'm not going to use a scoreboard I'm just going to kind of give it some finger folds and then I can come back in with my bone folder later all right we're going to see if we can tidy this one up on the front and get it nice and straight so let's come take this off in here. There we go. And I'm going to take these, these pieces off. When you're doing these at home, it, I will tell you it is much easier if you can kind of get your at least for me, if I can kind of get my head right down there into that, that uh, close to that paper pad. So if you don't have a camera in your way, you're going to have a much easier time of it. So I'm going to go ahead and get that piece up there. And let's pull this taut down there. And I like that. There we go. Now, I am going to use the other side of this DSP to create a banner. And you can do all sorts of decorating on the front of these if you want. I try and keep my crafter ones fairly minimal just to keep the price down. These kinds of items are things that people generally are wanting some small stocking stuffer kind of items. And so they, they don't want a huge expense on it. Let's go ahead. I'm going to 
give this some extra creasing with my bone folder. Just get some nice sharp creases in there and that's going to help that to lay flat for us. I'm going to bring in my stamp. Your friendship means the world to me. And we're going to just stamp that there and I've got my classic label punch. And boy, I got that pretty close to the edge there. Let's see. There we go. And then I'm going to bring in the little flower image from this set as well. And um, I stamped it before in the Memento Black, but I, th I think I want to try putting it in the pool party this time. You do want to make sure that you have a scrap piece of paper. I've got my grid paper behind so you're not getting this on your surface. I'm just going off the edge there. I think I like that nice soft look. And our stamp and blends have two ends, a bullet point and a brush tip. So I'm going to come in here with this brush tip. Now the Stampin' Blends are alcohol markers, so they are going to have a little bit of bleeding with that ink if you're looking for precision with the, the pigment ink. Um, that's why we tend to use our Memento Black, but for floral, I don't mind if those lines are a little softer and not quite as crisp. Now if you've been watching me, you know I love dimensionals. But on this, because it's probably going to be going into somebody's purse or um, sliding in and out, I'm actually just going to use glue. I'm going to keep myself from grabbing those dimensionals so it doesn't snag on somebody's purse as they're going in and out. Hey guys, I almost forgot to show you what we're doing with these other two pieces of paper. So I'm inserting a clip here. I had to go back and add another little video to show you. We're going to use these to line the inside of our tablets. So that's why we want them just a slightly shorter. So if they were too long, they're going to impede with the opening and closing of this pad. And the great thing with the DSP is you get to decide which side do you like. And I just love these florals. So I'm going to keep with the florals on the inside and... For the inside, I am just going to be using my Tombow Mono Multi, and I'm going to get that right up into the, the corner there. Don't need a whole lot of this, as always, and I'm going to slide and make sure I've got those corners lined up nicely on the edge, and then just adhere this down. We're going to do the same with the inside back panel. Now, you don't have to do this step. It would be completely fine the way it was, but I just think it adds that nice finishing touch to the project when we have the insides looking all beautiful. And this DSP is gorgeous. So, go ahead and so that's it for this. I will show you the packaging in the next video as well. I'll show you how I use the rest of these papers, those other two pads here. I'm going to take all of these and we are going to create two more items and I will show you the packaging as well. So make sure that you stay tuned for that until we meet again. Grab your paper stamp and ink and make something creative.